if we were to get another round, if you will, another surge, would it be BA2, doctor? It would be, yeah, it would be BA2 at this point. Probably BA2 represents about 50% of all cases in many parts of this country right now. The CDC data is lagging. Certainly the data coming out of Connecticut suggests that. So already, we already have a high prevalence of BA2. We're starting to see some uptick in data in cases if you look at the wastewater data, as Meg alluded to. Um, and we'll probably see that flow through in terms of diagnosed cases and some rise in hospitalizations. I don't think this is going to be another major wave of infection, but we're probably going to go up from here before we continue the declines. It's true that Europe is seeing a wave of infection right now. We're about three weeks behind Europe, but we also have the benefit of getting further into the spring, which is going to provide some seasonal backstop against a very big surge of infection. Could we get to 60,000 cases a day or somewhere around there? It's possible that we get back to those kinds of levels before we start to decline again. But as we have this mini bump, and I think it's going to be some kind of mini surge, um, as we get further into the spring and the summer, we should see cases start to come down again. So it's going to be a lot like last spring where we saw a bump up of infections in the springtime from B117, and then we continued our declines. We had very low levels in June and July. Well, it just the, the most important question. I was, you know, I, I thank you for all that information. But where I was going to go after that was, what do we know about the pathology of BA2 in in vaccinated individuals, in unvaccinated individuals, and in individuals that have already had natural immunity from either Delta or Omicron? How dangerous is BA2? Is it got, is it getting progressively less pathogenic? And if it is. When do we start moving into that next mindset that you have predicted all along, that it's going to be endemic and not much different than seasonal flu or, or maybe even not as bad as that? Are we there already? And if we are, are we going to make too much of this just because they count as COVID cases? But there, there's, if there's no hospitalizations, even in unvaccinated people, and if there's no serious uh, uh, disease, even or in people that have already had one or the other, Delta or Omicron, should we be playing it up as much as we are? Yeah, look, I think that's the key point. Um, we probably shouldn't see a big spike in hospitalizations because a lot of the people who are hospitalized during the Omicron wave were people who are unvaccinated. And many people who are unvaccinated have already had Omicron. And what we know is that the immunity that you get from Omicron is very protective against this BA2 variant. They're, they're similar enough that the, there's cross immunity between these two strains. There was a study out of um, I think it was Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, that showed about 95 percent protection from prior infection from BA1, uh, providing cross immunity to BA2. The data out of the U.K. suggests that BA2 is no more pathogenic than BA1. It doesn't lead to an increased rate of hospitalizations. Um, it's not making people more seriously ill. The vaccine seems equally protective against BA2, if not a little bit more protective. So there's no reason to believe that the contours of this wave from BA2 should be any different than what we experienced with BA1, and probably less so because we have so much Omicron immunity in the population. At least 50 to 60 percent of Americans have had Omicron at this point. And many of those who've had it are people who are un unvaccinated. So now they have immunity from Omicron that's going to persist for at least nine, uh, 90 days and probably upwards of six months. That's going to provide them protection against getting reinfected or getting seriously ill with BA2.